Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the second game in this best of five series from the IEM Sao Paulo between Empire's Violet as the Red Zerg on the left side of the map and EG's the Muslim as the Blue Terran on the right side of the map. Now, the map is GSL's dual site. There's no R-E-S-E, -E, anything like that to get confused with. For those of you who are not familiar with the map, it is one, again, heavily used in the GSL. Basically, I'm not sure, uh, my screen is very dark, I'm not sure exactly how to fix that, but if I highlight you can see it, there is a ramp right here leading straight down to your natural. There is a natural third right over here, there's also a base here, and there are bases at either end. So it has the potential to go up to 5 base versus 5 base play. It is smaller than the previous map, it does not have quite the... Um, quite the rush distance so it's one of those maps depending on how the players want to do it it can have a very long macro style game or it can end up having a quick rush huge aggression style now the last game i was casting a little bit uh, i was coughing a little bit i should say i do have a little bit of a cold so hopefully i will not be this time i just put in a lozenge uh so hopefully you guys cannot hear that i'll take a look see if you can i'll try my best but hopefully that'll help stop me from coughing just because as i do all this talking it tickles my throat and the coughing is always unfortunate i'm sure it's very loud for you guys so last game for those of you guys not go check it out you should go watch right now it's just going to be empire violet versus eg the muslim game one on tall dream alter some letter e and that game, I won't say too much, but I'll say Violet went for a pretty aggressive build. And it's a kind of build it can end the game, or you can transition out of it if you do some damage. And it happened in that case to just end the game. So we'll have to see, in this game, will Violet do that same kind of build, just because it could end the game, but it's not all in. Or will he just go straight for the big macro style? We do have the same opener, we have... The hatch first, the spawning pool, and I could have sworn we saw gas somewhere. Okay, the gas is in the base. I was looking at the production tab, and I saw the extractor. I was like, okay, same opening. I looked in the base and didn't see an extractor, and I was very confused, but he did get it. SCV sniping that drone right there. Very nice, along with the Marine. Nice little tag team, and the SCV did indeed get the kill, I believe. Where are you? Yeah, right there. The SCV did get the kill. And we see the Muslim is going to see that hatch first from Violet. But again, that is very standard. We see two drones being put briefly onto that SCV. And we will see the Muslim, of course, will check that extractor, check for the timing on it, see how much has been done. We have four Zerglings on the way, six Zerglings now, as well as the two Queens, all very standard. And we see the Muslim doing the almost the exact same build he went last game, this Hellion Expand, where you just get the Barracks. And then I'm not sure if there's a particular er order, probably economical versus more aggressive, but you get a factory and you get a command center, you get the Hellions, and you put some pressure on the Zerg player as you expand. Of course, that is one of the, um, just kind of things that has been an important idea, a good idea in RTSs, as long as they've been around, you expand while you're pressuring your opponent. So you see Violet, he does have eight Zerglings on the field now, so these are generally for a little bit more aggression maybe some aggressive scouting normally you try and get away with as few as possible of course that is more drones you see if he had made two less zerglings he would be ahead on the drones right now so we do see these zerglings just running up they do see the factory happening and okay what that did definitely is because of that swap off on the factory in the barracks it makes the muslim have to be very careful he does not let the zerglings into the base because not only will that cause a lot of trouble but it'll also delay the hellions so we do see the Violet, what he did is he got the 100 gas and then he just took two of the guys off of gas and got the Zergling speed. So what the what this lets him do is simply get the gas that he needs and not really have his mineral income be hurt, but it lets him slowly get the gas. So whenever he says, okay, I want my lair, and he puts guys back on gas, he's already at, you know, 80, 90, even 100 gas, as opposed to just having to start back from zero. We do have a macro hatchery on the way from Violet, making a little Sim City here. Hard for Hellions to get in here, and of course, to get around. But we also see the Evolution Chamber. I'm not exactly sure what that for. It just uh, reduces the size of this choke a little bit. But I would definitely say we are not going to see that same aggressive style from the Muslim or from Violet that we saw the last game. And at the same time, 
the Muslim not being nearly as aggressive as he was the last game. These Hellions are just staying in the base. It looks like they will be moving out now. But we have a very fast siege tank or a siege upgrade along with tanks from the Muslim. He might even be going a bit of a mecking style. Looking at it, yeah, we see no Marines in production. We see siege tanks and Hellions. And this is something that, while definitely scary for the Zerg player, can often be easily dealt with roaches. With dealt with with roaches, of course. Violet has not built a roach one, so he's gonna have to be very careful to not lose too many drones. We see a second spine crawler on the way, because he did, I believe, have control of these Zonaga towers. He saw the Hellions coming. And the Muslim making sure his Hellions are together here. They accidentally went different directions, um, around the map to the base. And that is something you definitely have to be careful of at any level, really, is the fact that, say, you have your units here, uh, let's say right here, and you tell them to go down here, half of them can go this way, half of them can go this way. That can be terrible if he kills half your army and the other half is fine, because then you lost a lot of army without doing a whole lot of damage. And so we see the Muslim checking for the third right there. There is no third. We see the SimCity proving very nice. It does not allow the Muslim to get in. He does pick off that drone. But the evolution chambers and the spine crawlers are just too hardy for those Hellions to be able to kill. Of course, they do not do very much damage versus anything that's not light. They do 8 damage a shot with a speed of 2.5. So they're not good against really anything but Zergling, Hellion, Marine, stuff like that. But we do see him denying some of the creep spread here, which is a very important thing to do as the Terran player just because the creep provides... Oh wow, we might see a flank from Violet. And here is the flank coming in, and the Hellions are getting good positioning, but a whole bunch of them are going to get surrounded and picked off. Five of the eight Hellions do get picked off right there. It uh, looks like another one is going to go down, potentially even more. If Violin can get this around, but he did start to lose a lot of Zerglings there. We see right there at the end with Violet chasing. The Muslim did catch up a little bit in the resources loss. He's only down by about 90 at this point. And it does look like, yeah, we do see a mech style from the Muslim. We have the armory coming out, which will allow him to get Thors. We have the factory and a bunch of Hellions, a bunch of siege tanks. This time being very careful. He is not going to get killed by no early game Baneling bus, anything like that. And so we will have to see how Violet chooses to react to this. He is getting the Spire, which can be very good. Of course, you do have to be very careful of those Thors. The uh, disadvantage of the mech army is, of course, the lack of mobility. But it is a very powerful, powerful force. So I have to see how Violet handles this. We do not get to see mech play hugely often between any of any of the top level Terran players. Really, he is going to come in here and take a look. He is going to scout this third. I feel like I've been neglecting the Terran a little bit. So let's take a look at his base. We see he's actually ahead on Harvesters right now. That is kind of insane. He has a third command center almost done. As well as the vehicle plating, the blue flame for the Hellions, and we see a Thor coming out. Two Thors, actually. We have, yeah, two factories with the tech labs on them, as well as another just constantly producing those Hellions. So definitely a mech play, but this is why I was talking about. These Hellions just don't really do damage to anything that's not a light unit. So I'm sure Violet's going to run in here eventually, because this thing's about, uh, the hatchery is at about half health. He doesn't want to let that get too low, or even lose it to Hellions. That would be, uh, quite embarrassing, I would say. But, I don't think Violet actually knows. We take a look at his vision. Okay, he does know. What does he have? What does he see? Um... Oh, he's a changeling. Okay, I was very confused. So he does see that the Muslim is going for a mech style, and yes, he did throw down a roach war, and he has the... Roach speed on the way, as well as the missile attacks level 1, and the carapace level 2. And as I was saying earlier, roaches are really kind of the best way to deal with this mech play. And at the same time, he chooses to grab a 4th base as well he's starting to saturate this third. He does have to worry about these Hellions, so they could get off a huge hit on these drones. Oh, there's only 4 there, though. Much less than I thought, but yeah, we see the drones going down very quickly. But the reason that Violet decided to grab all these extra bases, is 4th base, in addition to that 3rd, which he just got up, is because normally the Zerg player would have to be worried about being stretched too thin because of a crazy drop style, but with the mech, there is not going to be any dropping happening. Violet is going to go ahead and do some damage here. He's being very careful to keep his Muta split up. He is very aware that there will be some Thors on the map, but you see the Thors without the bunching up do a good, do, oh, do not do very much damage to them, but Violet making a little bit of a mistake there, bunching up. He does lose three Mutas in that engagement, but now there are just a whole bunch of 
Virgis here. This the Muslim saying three zero and Violet saying TT. I don't totally know what that is about. I guess that might be um because Violet did win that first game. Um, I guess that might be the Muslim saying that he is gonna get three would perhaps by Violet. Violet's very sad for his StarCraft friend. He does not want that to happen. Some Banelings running around here. I'm not exactly sure what they're for, but the Mutas do see this, and the Command Center is not going to be able to land. The Banelings burrowing, but of course, uh, the, mostly to kill the SCVs, because of course they don't do a whole lot of damage versus the Thors. Looks like we are going to have a push out coming from the Muslim. He might be pushing out. He has a lot of SCVs in with this army now. It looks like those were just the transferring SCVs. But this is a lot of Thors, guys. But the thing is, he doesn't have any attack upgrades coming out. And I feel like that is not going to help him. We see the Roaches are at the 2-1 over the 1-0 of the Thors. And the Roaches are going to have to see if they can do any work. They do have the Roach speed. They also have the Burrow. It looks like they're going to be able to run in here, pick off a Thor, and just run back out. Because, of course, the only units that can't catch up with them are the Hellions, which can't actually do damage versus them. Mm. So... Right now, everything's just been a kind of a stalemate. We do see that Violet's actually lost uh, quite a few units. He's lost seven workers versus the three that have been lost by the Muslim. But a lot of those units lost are just in the things like the Zerglings, the Banelings that he made in the early game. And of course, simply do not do too great against this mech play. But with the Neural Parasite on the way, in addition to a whole bunch of roaches and six infestors is what I think I saw. Yes, yeah, six infestors on the field right now. That neural parasite can do wonders versus the Thors versus the siege tanks, stuff like that. Mm, excuse me, guys. Especially coupled with all of these roaches. So the roach is actually pushing in as soon as the Muslim starts to pick off. It looks like he's going to get a free Thor. He's going to be moving into the mineral line, seeing if he can get any work done. Trying to split his roaches a little bit to mitigate that siege tank damage. And also keep the units distracted down here while he runs by into the main. He's going to be killing... A lot of SCVs here, guys. We see he's up to 14, 15 SCV kills. I'm not sure if he will get any more. The Muslim did quickly deactivate the base, but... Or, um... What should I say? Uh... He ran the SCVs out of the base. I'm not sure why I said deactivate, guys. And this did a good amount of damage. And Violet actually burrowing some roaches, forcing a scan. And the roaches are burrowing on different sides of the base. And this is very nice, because, of course, they can't get seen by just one scan. So very nice run by from Violet there, killed another 14 workers, and at the same time he's running into the planetary fortress with a bunch of roaches. These are going to be able to do a lot of damage, they should be able to snipe the planetary. And so not only did the Muslim just take a lot of damage in workers and take a lot of damage to his infrastructure, he is going to lose his third base now. Oh, the Muslim is on five, or Violet is on five bases, guys. At this point, I definitely have to say, I think that... Um, Violet has the advantage in this game. He is running out, picking off a whole bunch of Hellions. Looks like he will be getting some SCVs. It looks like for a second, the Muslim was going to try and block this with a barracks or two. But <coughs> instead, he just loses a whole lot of work. Because he's lost 45 workers, guys, at this point. The Muslim is kind of all in. He only has one barely mining base. There is still damage being done in this base here. More roaches ran by. They did do some damage to the SCVs, but they're just doing damage. The Muslim has to attack now. He has no other choice. And so here's where Violet will have to be very careful. Getting a good fungal off on those Hellions. Able to do a lot of damage to those. But he needs to be very careful with the Infestors. The Infestors dying extremely quickly. The Roaches also falling very fast. And because the Roaches, the main Roach force, is doing a counterattack up here, taking advantage of the fact that they are faster. And he has so many bases, guys. I think if this comes down to a base race, the Muslim has almost no hope because he does not have very many bases, nor does he have the mobile force he needs to kill all of these units. The Spine putting up a valiant effort to kill all of these units. But this army has actually been significantly reduced in size. Almost all the Hellions are dead. Tanks are being left behind a little bit. There are a whole bunch of Thors and mostly SCVs. We see, wow, Violet at an 80 supply advantage. While he is wrecking the natural of Violet, Violet is wrecking the main. But the Muslim lifting up his buildings, flying them across the map. Because, of course, roaches cannot shoot up. It looks like Violet is rebuilding his roach war. And I guess he did lose it. Take a look right here. And no, he did not lose it. He is rebuilding it in anticipation. But the Muslim is going to maybe fly all the way over here. He's going to see this base and be like, oh gosh, that 
is probably not very good for my chances of winning. We do see another Spire also coming up from Violet. He's going to need them if he wants to pick off all of these buildings. And so it looks like Violet putting out a smiley face right there. And the Muslim putting out a percent sign face. I'm turning my head sideways trying to see what that might be. Either way, I think it is very frowny. And so very interesting right there uh, from a Violet with that smiley face. I would say that's almost a little... Um, a little bad mannered I feel of course unless the players are friends but Violet I have heard is a wonderful person he is supposed to be one of the nicest people speaks very good English from what I've heard so I'm sure it wasn't actually 2 BM both players are just having fun playing the game they love but the Muslim not having too much fun because he is down by a hundred supply and he has been forced to relocate his main Violet's uh, roach does run in here he sees this, trying to see, trying to do whatever damage he can to this plant or to the orbital. And it looks like these few units might actually be able to pick it off. Now there, he's forced to lift off again, but moving back to his main. But there are still roaches there as well. And it looks like we do have a big engagement coming out here. Neural parasiting two Thors, but they instantly get picked off. But that does stop a few shots. But Violet saying, "Okay, I cannot attack that thing. Holy crap! I'm going back." We have five Hellions on the way. Interesting choice. It seems like that is uh, really just kind of what he can afford. Of course, the five Hellions can do a good amount of damage to on um, the economy and whatnot. But the Muslim doing a very good job making sure that whenever he is going to be engaging somewhere, he has great positioning. Just because, of course, um, without that positioning, without these siege tanks and whatnot being in the right place, these roaches could destroy the Muslim's army. But unfortunately, he is kind of out of stuff to repair. And he is not able to scan, guys. I just thought of that. And so if Violet is able to bring in some roaches, maybe snipe these two Thors, burrow them, move them away, stuff like that, there is not too much that the Muslim can do about it. We see he is forced to leave these up because we have roaches at almost every base that would be able to block it would be able to do some damage and we also the only untouched base or almost untouched base is this one up here all the others are taken by violet or have been almost mined out as we see at the natural and at the main it looks like a whole bunch of drones running in here maybe trying to do some damage i'm not sure if that was on purpose we just have the muslim doing a very slow push trying to kill off the bases of violet one by one it looks like violet was actually not in as good shape as I thought. The Muslim does see this base up here, and I'm sure he knows about this one as well. We can go ahead and take a look. And yes, he does know about these bases, and he sees this one being made up here. So he knows, okay, if I can just kill these bases, I will be okay. He does scan. He manages to get that roach. He does have the orbital commands landed now, and so there is still a chance that he could come back in this game guys he has a lot of thors with the 2-1 upgrades he has quite a few siege tanks and hellions as well he does know what is going on the map and while violet he has these big roach forces and he has the huge supply advantage roaches are not too wonderful but 63 of them against thors and siege tanks that is indeed a lot of roaches guys i didn't think he had quite that many i do see him remaking his lair making more roaches trying to mine again um, with the Muslim with the two workers, and we have, what's his face, Violet with the 18, running and contaminating that right there, stopping more workers from being made, so that's just a kind of nice little annoyance, and we see Violet picking off these supply depots, and the scouting barracks at the 26 minute mark, running in, seeing what's going on here, he does see this base, he does see that it is up and running, but... The problem is the Muslim is constantly being supply blocked. He's going to lose these supply depots. He has a tech lab up here. He might lose this one as well just in case we see Violet does see that one. And the problem is even though he's still in the game, he has such a low income. Of course, the mules are what's giving him a high one. But he only has a few workers. He's constantly being supply blocked. He can't really make units, guys. And I think this huge roast force with this big concave might be more than enough to clean up Violet at this point. I would really like to see him just run in. But of course, from our perspective, we can see, oh, Violet should be fine. But from his perspective, he might be like, oh gosh, guys. But if he engages now, the tanks are unseaged. He could engage. You see, army partially split up, and there he goes. He runs in. He snipes those Thors so quickly, guys. We have more roaches running in, and I think this is going to be it from the Muslim. Yeah, 
good game, well played from the Muslim, that was a very well played game. Violet doing a very good job handling that kind of unorthodox siege, um, or I should say mech playstyle. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that mech playstyle right there. Of course, again, it is a little different. You don't see it that often. And I hope I did it justice casting it. So now Violet is up 2-0 in this best of five. So if the Muslim wants to be able to stay in the tournament, stay in the game, um, stay in this series, he needs to come back and at least win a game to stay in it. He needs to win three straight to win it though so i'll be bringing you guys the rest of those games soon i hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful afternoon